This presentation shows the performance of the MKS Instruments Vacuum Quality Monitor, or VQM, at ultra-high vacuum levels. The VQM is made at the Granville Phillips Product Center in Longmont, Colorado. The VQM has many advantages at UHV and is capable of operating at extreme vacuum levels. We have run experiments in pressures as low as 3e to the minus 13 torr. The reason it is able to perform so well in these conditions is that the sensor uses an ion trap which is filled at all pressures. There is no loss of performance as the pressure decreases like what you would see with a quadrupole RGA. VQM does not overrepresent hydrogen like the RGAs do. It has a low carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide outgassing and no oxygen outgassing. The dynamic range of the system is up to four decades and is also capable of catching fast transients since the VQM can perform a 1 to 135 AMU scan in 85 milliseconds. Here is the UHV system we set up to run our experiments. It has a stainless steel UHV chamber with multiple ports and uses a CTI cryopump. There are two gas analyzers, the SRS RGA200 with an electron multiplier and the 830 VQM with a filament assembly that was vacuum fired for cleanliness. The Granville Phillips UHV370 stable ion gauge is used to determine the pressure of the chamber. The system was baked out at 200 degrees C for one week and the pressure achieved was approximately 2.9 E to the minus 11 torr. First we'll look at the results from the SRS quadrupole RGA. The electron multiplier was required to get enough sensitivities to see any gases other than hydrogen. It was set up to do a 270 second scan from 1 to 135 AMU. The total pressure in the chamber was 2.9 E to the minus 11 torr. You can see hydrogen, water, carbon monoxide, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. The first thing to notice is that the partial pressure of hydrogen is incorrect. It measures as 8 e to the minus 10 torr, which is impossible because the total pressure is 2.9 e to the minus 11 torr. This is mainly caused by zero blast, which occurs with quadrupole RGAs because the poles do not filter correctly at the lower masses. You can see significant oxygen, carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide which are all being outgassed by the RGA. And notice the minimum detectable partial pressure is 1 e to the minus 13. Now we'll look at the 830 VQM results. This was also set up with a 270 second 1 to 135 AMU scan. Unlike RGAs, the 1 to 135 AMU scan always takes 85 milliseconds. So we averaged 3200 scans together to improve the dynamic range, giving us the same response time as the RGA. First notice that hydrogen is not overestimated. It is reported as 1.46 E to the minus 11. Also notice that there is no oxygen because VQM does not outgas oxygen. We do see water, CO, and CO2 around 2e to the minus 12 torr versus 3e to the minus 11 for the RGA. Since we're looking at a log scale to determine the dynamic range, you can look at the minimum peaks detected and how far below the maximum peak they appear. The maximum peak is hydrogen, and we are seeing in peaks 1, 2, 3 over three decades below the maximum peak. So the minimum detectable partial pressure in this experiment is H1 at 4.7 E to the minus 14. Switching the display to a linear scale shows how little outgassing there really is in the VQM, both for CO, CO2, and the hydrocarbons. This is a comparison of the waveforms from the VQM and the RGA. The RGA waveform is red and the VQM is blue. The waveforms have been normalized to the water peak, so all the other peaks will indicate the relative amount of the other gases and the outgassing from the gas analyzer itself. Looking at hydrogen, you can see the VQM resolution is much better with a much more defined and thinner line. Plus the RGA overestimates the amount of hydrogen in the system. The actual waveform goes way off the chart. See how the RGA is outgassing much more CO. Also notice how the 16, 17, and 18 peak height ratios look much more accurate for the VQM. 
Next we wanted to see if the different gas analyzers could detect a transient. In this case we are looking at an extractor gauge filament turning on. To see transients we reduce the number of averages to three giving us a 253 millisecond response time. The transient is very easy to detect. For the RGA we set it close to the minimum which is a four second scan. The transient is below the noise level and the RGA is not fast enough to see it anyway. In this case, the noise level is reported to be about 1e e to the minus 10 when in reality the total pressure of the system is below that at 2.9e e to the minus 11. These spikes are not the transient. They are just dropouts on the water waveform. In summary, the VQM has better performance than the RGAs at UHV levels. We haven't hit the lower pressure limit of the VQM and don't expect many people to go below 3E to the minus 13 TOR where we did test. Outgassing of CO and CO2 is very low and there is no detectable oxygen outgassing. The VQM has the ability to catch fast transients and can get up to four decades of dynamic range, meaning you can detect gases that are four decades lower in pressure than the gas that has the highest partial pressure. And finally, the VQM does not overrepresent hydrogen. It does not have an issue with zero blast and uses an external total pressure gauge, which is much more accurate than the internal measurement on the RGA. Check out the MKSinstruments.com website for more information, and thanks for listening.